Classification of living organisms An introduction to the classification of living organism full course all in one video. Approximately in less than two hours, we will discuss the different classification of living things. So without further ado, let's get started. A very long time before, biologists have examined and described more than 1.8 million kinds of living organisms, and there are still many more to be discovered and described. We must therefore have a meaningful way of classifying living organisms, identifying and naming them. Aristotle, 322-384 BC, he was a Greek philosopher, was the first to make attempt to classify living organisms. According to his theory, he claimed that everything is made up of five elements. The first one is us, the second one is fire, the third one is air, and the third one is water, and the last one is ester. He made a finding contribution to all fields of philosophy and science. He embedded the field of formal logic. And also one of the work of Aristotle, he identified the various scientific disciplines and explored their relationship to each other. He was also a teacher and he founded his own school in Athens, Lithons in Greece. Here are the things to remember when it comes to Aristotle. But there is an important again, important question you may encounter. Key friends to remember again. Question number one, what is the biological contribution of Aristotle? A simple question. Aristotle distinguished about 400 species of beasts, mammals, species and the history of animal and part of animal. His system of classification is one of the earliest in a scientific taxonomy. Question number two, why who is the father of zoology? The answer should be Aristotle because he studied mainly under animals. Question number three, who is the father of zoology? Though there are some scientists, but Aristotle is still the father of biology because he is the first to attempt classify and classify living organisms. But his system, as I say, is mainly zoology. Hence, the science of biology was embedded by Aristotle. Before Aristotle, many Greek philosophers had speculated about the origin of Earth, life, but their theory was unsupported by empirical investigations. So, now we are going to the modern classification of living organisms under the work of Carolus Linnaeus. Modern classification of living organisms. Carolus Linnaeus, Swedish naturalist, 1707 to 1778. Present method of classification is based on work of Carolus Linus or Calvo Lin. The study of general principle of classification is known as taxonomy or systematic. Is the grouping of living organisms together are on the base on the features they share in a common, which means their features should be shared in a common. These features should have a similar origin, structure, and positions. The next one is division and subdivision within a main group are based on progressively less important features. For example, superclass or subpylon are based on less important features. And many biologists contribute a lot on the classification of living organisms after Carolus Linnaeus. Key friends to remember, grouping of organisms together are based on the features they share in common. So let's go to the biological classification of systems there are two main types of biological classification systems the first one is artificial classification systems while is the placement of organisms in a group for a convenience is based on one or more observable features for instance organisms can be classified based or according to where they live how they move how they feed how they size how color and sex etc natural classification system is the grouping of organisms according to their natural relationship. It is mainly based on many common features, both internal and external. Use information for many branches of biology. Most classification today is a natural and replicated to pelagic relationship, which means historical evolutionary relationship of organisms. Classification of organisms into taxa. Modern biologists have classified living organisms into taxa. The taxa consists of a series of groups attached in a hierarchy. Attached in a hierarchy. Each group is also called taxon, which consists of organisms that share some future, including they are in common or they have common ancestries. So, biologists have been classified organisms into taxa. Hierarchy of living organisms. 
There are seven major heritage of living organisms. Otexa. The first one is kingdom, pylon, division, order, family, genus, and species. Kingdom, phylum, or division, class, order, family, genus, or species. Kingdom is the first one and species is the last one. Some important points to take note. Kingdom is the largest group which splits into similar group and this group into similar group. So kingdom is the largest one. And kingdom is the largest with fewest common features. It has a fewest common feature that is kingdom. Species is the smaller group, group with common feature. Species is the smallest group with, with many common features, so similar they interbreed. Species is the smallest group with many common features, which so similar they can interbreed. Some intermediate levels are added, such as sub or superclass, subpylon or superclass. The hierarchy of living organisms are based on the are arranged from the highest to the lowest level. A simple question Why scientists use method of classification? It provides a set of rules that can be used to identify living organisms. It shows organisms within group are related. So biology binomial nomenclature of living organisms, that is naming organisms. Firstly, we are familiar with common naming of living organisms. For example, male, maize, elephant, human being, and cat, etc. Biological nomenclature is based on biological system proposed by Swedish naturalist Carolus Linus. In this system, organism is given name consists of two words. The first one is general or generic or genus name. It's the first of the genus to which organism is belongs to. The second one is species or specific name. It's the second name of the species in which it belongs to. You have to take note of these two. For naming of plants, is governed by International Court of Botanical Nomenclature, ICBN. For naming of animals, is governed by International Court of Zoological Nomenclature, ICZN. Also, you need to take note of this. Rules for naming binomial system of nomenclature. Generic name must start with uppercase letter. Species name must start with lowercase letter. You have to take note of also this. Both names are written in italic when printed. Both names are written in italic when printed and underlined when typing or handwriting. So you have to take note about these three rules. Generic name start with uppercase letter, uppercase letter. Species name must start with lowercase letter. Both names are written in italic when printed and underlined when typing or you are a handwriting when you are handwriting with your book. So this is the point of you have to consider. But let me give you some typical example of some common like lizard and maize, human being, and African alpha, alpha, alpha elephants. Under maize, when printed, Z maize is the name of the maize, normal maize as you can see here. Z is a generic name start with a case letter, and maize is the species name. And when typing Z maize, we have to underline them. Don't forget, Z must start with um, a case letter. And the second one is Agama Lisa, that is Lisa. Agama is a generic name start with capital letter. And lizard is a species name. Then the next one is Homo sepen, that is human being. Homo is a generic name. Sepen is a species name. And also the next one is African elephant. Lexandota africana. So you have to take note of this. Now we will talk about example of biological nomenclature of some living organisms. For example, human being, that is Homo sepens. They belong to the first kingdom, that is kingdom animalia. And which is all animals. And under phylum, they are Chodata, animal with notochord. And they have a sub phylum. This is Batibra, which means animal with backbone. Under class, they belong to mammalian. Mammalian, these are animals with hair and milk glands. Under order, they belong to primates. Primates are mammals with grasping and hands and feet. With grasping hands and feet. Okay, that is primates. Under family, they are hominids. Hominites. Hominites. Hominites are primates with relatively flat space and three dimension version. Under genus, okay, they belong to homo. Hormones are hominites with upright posture and large brain. That is genus and the last one is species they are homo sapiens homo sapiens is it how i it, supposed to pronounce it homo sapiens these are genus with higher porridge head high porridge head and think think school ball 
these are genus with higher forehead and thin skull bones. So as you can see here, this is how it is growing, increasing or decreasing from kingdom to phylum, and sometimes there is subphylum or superphylum and class order family genus. This is human being. As you can see here now, I it is imprinted. I make it in Italian. That is Homo sapien. So we are going to talk about the next one. That is kingdom. Okay, Lazandota, Lazandota elephant. This is an African elephant, and it is um, a natural name. Why? Well, a botanical name is Lazandota elephant. An elephant that is normal elephant, African elephant. I'm talking about African elephant. They belong to kingdom number one. That is Animalia, and it is all animal. And Pylum, they belong to Chodata, animal with not a cord. And sub Pylum, they are about to breed. As you can see here, it has a relationship with all animal. But under class, okay, under class, they are still mammalian with hair and milk gland. But under under order, okay, the difference in under order, um, they are probisidia, probis probisidia order, okay. Elephant is under order. Under class of order is probisidia. These are large, uh, largest animal with long, flexible trunks, elongated nose. That is, that is the, the, the family of that. They have a long, elongated nose. And family, elephant is under African elephant is elephant tendi, elephant tendi, elephant tendi. How it is supposed to pronounce? These are elephant found in Asian and Africa. Okay, and then the next one is genus, genus. They belong to Lesondota. In African African elephant in Africa, Lesondota are elephant in Africa that have both sex and trunks, large ear, two fingers, and lips at the end of the trunks. Then the next one is species. Species. This is an African elephant. Africana. They belong to Africana. It's a species that is Africana. Africana elephant. Okay. So as you can see here, this is a typical note of about African elephant kingdom. Pylum, subpylum, orders, kingdom, they belong to animalia, pylum to data, subpylum, vertebrate, class, and mammalian, order, they belong to Pobicida, family, they belong to elephante, genus, they belong to Lozondota, and species, they belong to Africana. And the botanical name, or well, a natural name, is Losodonta elephant. And the next one we're going to talk about is mess, that is Z mess, that is normal mess, as you can see here, mess. They belong to kingdom plants, plantae, this is all plants. Division, they, they, they have division. They, the, oh, I say pylum. They belong to Trachopita. We are going to talk about Trachopita very soon. And they have superclass. They belong to superclass of Supermotopita. These are seeds producing plants. They produce seed. And the class, subclass, okay? The class, they belong to Angiospan, that is flowering plant. And subclass, they belong to flowering plant that have one seed, that is a monocotyledium, monocotyledium, as you can see here. So, they have super class under division that is supermatopita super, 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 and class is angiospan and subclass is monocotyledon. Under order, they are graminals, lips with shelting leaf based on implorance of spicated. Family, they are graminaceae, graminaceae. Example, cereal, miller, and bamboos. And genus, they are Z. Okay, the generic name of that, they are belong to Z plants. Maize plant, female employers, and develop into crop. Species, they belong to maize. A cultivated maize plant, that is maize. So this is a typical example of biological nomenclature of some living organisms. We start from Homo sapiens, that is human being. Lozondota elephant, that is African elephant. And also Z maize, that is maize. So, classification of organisms into kingdoms. There are different classification systems. Linus placed all living organisms into two kingdoms, according to Linus. He placed them into kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia, according to Carolus Linus. Though, so, according to this system, many one cell could not fit in its property. There is no, there is no space for unicellular or I say prokaryotic organisms. And most biologists favor placing of all living organisms into five kingdoms. The first one is kingdom Monera. Kingdom Protista, and also the third one is Kingdom Fungi, and the fourth one is Kingdom Plantae, and also the fifth one or the last one is Kingdom Animalia. These are the most complex one, okay, most advanced ones. And later classification by Carl Woods, a microbiologist in 1960, proposed a category beyond kingdom called domain. He classified living organisms into three domains. 
the first one Asia prokaryotic kingdom of Monera, these are Asia and eukaryotic all eukaryotic kingdom and the last one is bacteria according to him bacteria belong to all family of bacteria for simple examination for simple convenience look at this kingdoms of living organisms we have kingdom prokaryotic kingdom eukaryotic kingdom prokaryotic and kingdom Monera and also kingdom eukaryotic are protista fungi plant and animal you have to take note of this prokaryotic and eukaryotic so let's start with kingdom monera kingdom monera they are the simplest living organisms they are the simplest living organism as i mentioned second single cell lack of nucleus means they are prokaryotic they don't have multicellular they are not multicellular cell they are single cell and mostly they are micro organism they are micro they are microscopic organisms they are maybe either motile or non-motile example are bacteria blue green algae red green algae anabena and etc some important questions to take notes please you have to pay attention on this one which kingdom is virus belong to simple questions you can answer it so the answer shall be virus are not included in any five kingdoms you have to take note this because biologists are still there debating over their status as living organisms currently virus considered as non-living things you have to take note of this one currently virus is taken as non-living things why virus is, is considered as a non-living organism is simple questions answer should be it can reproduce inside the cell it can only reproduce inside the cell of living organisms outside the cell of it exhibits as a crystal and seems to be no different from any other non-living thing and it seems to be considered as a connecting limb between living thing and non-living thing or as a borderline between living things and non-living things so question number three what is virus a simple question a virus is extremely small and can only be seen through electron microscope and it doesn't have a cell structure but it's made of coiled strand of nucleoid acid enclosed within a protein coat so you have to pay attention and take note of this it considered as a non-living thing currently and it is connecting link between living things and non-living things sometimes you may call it borderline overview structure of some moneras structure of bacteria and shapes of bacteria we are going to talk about them and their function step by step in a just review so the first option is cap capsule capsule is the outermost layer of bacteria as you can see here it's a slimy covering it's sometimes labeled as slim capsule that help bacteria to stay together in a colonies or provide some protection to the cell that is capsule as you can see the red one the first layer the red one and the second one as you can see the yellow one that is cell wall cell wall is a rigid framework of marine which is polysaccharide cross-linked by peptide bond is compared with plant cell wall which are made of, of cellulose the next one as you can see here with the green is a called plasma membrane a plasma membrane sometimes called cell membrane is a possibility by layer not it's not a, it's, a, it's a flexible not rigid like a cell wall the fourth one as you can see here the blue is a jelly like like what you see it contains everything inside the cell that is cytoplasm cytoplasm is a jelly like something that consists of mainly water and also in general, cytoplasm contain enzymes cell cell compartments component let me see cell component example ribosomes plasmic food store and protein etc and virus organic molecule and as you can see there is a pili which is responsible for attachment during a sexual reproduction and for attachment then plagella is responsible for movement and there's a nuclear that is control center of the cell it tells, it tells the cell what to do and what not to do and in that in, inside nucleus it contains nucleus that is dna long strong of dna as you can see here so here it is just short review about a prokaryotic cell of kingdom manera um it is bacteria and the shapes of bacteria bacteria has a spare shapes rod shapes and spiral shape the spare is called cochi rod shape is called bacilli diplo tetrad and staphylococci and sarcosin and chains of bacillus that is if it has many chains of bacillus and plagiarist rot bacillus that has a plagella and swapoma and spiral pebros pasilla and spiral purchase these are typical shapes of bacteria you need to remember them so this is just in a review we will make a special video about the shapes of monera structure of monera like bacteria and shapes 
all you need to do to subscribe to this channel and also turn on notification bell so that by the time we release new video you'll be the first one to get notice we will make a video all about kingdom minera next step we are going to talk about is types and shapes structure of virus they are so through virus a virus that attack bacteria tobacco mosaic virus and structure of virus there they may either protein coat that contains strand of nucleic acid dna or rna dna stand for dioxyribonucleic acid and rna stand for ribonucleic acids so the next chapter we're going to talk about is protista kingdom protista they are single cell or unicellular organisms they are much larger than moneras more than 100 times or 10 to 100 times they have a true nucleus which means they are eukaryotic organisms they may be either motile or non-motile by use of plagella cilia and etc mostly are aquatic found in ponds river sea moist place kingdom protista divided into two protopyta and protozoa Pylum protopyta some protista are plants like pro because contains cellular cell they are plant like that is protopyta they are photosynthetic organisms have an organic called chloroplasm which contain chloroplasm which enable them to make their own food example is chlamydomonas cholera found in fresh water and diatoms found in both fresh water and sea containing hard silica coats phylum protozoa phylum protozoa some protista are animal like because they lack of cellular cell wall so they are protozoa that resemble animal lack of photosynthesis so they can't manufacture their own put no chloroplasm which means cannot manufacture their own put they are ready-made example of protozoa are amoeba and Pramision. so as you can see here as we go down the complex is increasing let me see the kingdom is increasing more complexity we talk about monera which are larger unicellular prokaryotic now we are going to talk about protista and this protista has some similarities between like plants and animal they are considered as a borderline between plants and animal but we are going to talk about it right now other features of protista um some protista for example iglina bibidis viridis is a protista that have a both plant-like and animal-like feature number one it has a chloroply which enables them to make it its own food but it lacks cellular cell wall but have a plasma membrane called pellico 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 that's it and as you can see here so iglina we can see is a borderline between plants and animal because it exhibits both characteristics of animal and also it exhibits characteristics of living organisms that is plants let me see it exhibits both characteristics of plants and animal they are connected limb or borderline it's depending on how you want to call it so you have to remember it igluna is a protista which has a chloroply with enable to make it can make its own food but it doesn't have a lack it doesn't have a solar cell wall so it can make its own food by use of chloroply but batada it doesn't have solar cell wall and they have it has a cell membrane of course or cell plasma membrane that is called pellico pellico how do you get it other reproductive features of protista first they reproduce asexually by the body in the two dorsal cell a reproductive feature of some protista as you can see here they can be a binary fishing and also they reproduce sexually which means producing male and female gamete with spews to form zygote as you can see here the zygotes undergo a special type of cell division called meiosis that is meiosis we will talk about it later and the meiosis later become spore which develop into new organisms and as you can see here so here are the main features of protista you need to understand it the borderline between plants and animal is regulina and we are going to talk about classification of protista based on motility and locomotion we will talk about it right now and as you can see here we have class one of the class four which there is a protista and that's organism example and that's a organs of locomotion or motility number one is rhizopoda they move by means rhizopoda example amoeba they move they move by means of pseudopodia so you put my pronunciations pseudopodia how you get it so you put a pronunciation 
and the class number two is Cilipora. The example of that organism is Paramecium. They move by means of cilia. You have the take note of this one. The next one is Mastigophora. Example is Trichomonas. They move by means of flagella. And the fourth one, or the fourth class is Sporozoa. Sporozoa. They are plasmodium, and they have no organ of movement, no organelle of movement. So, it may questions may come into you in this table. So, I highly recommend that you have the tech note about this one. Most especially, cilia, primison, and plagella, seudophodia. These organs of locomotion, you may encounter a question in your jam, and what about it? The question you will, they will ask you a question about this one. So, you have the tech note of this table classification of protista based on motility and locomotion. And also, that point I want to talk about a spore. I mentioned a spore. It's a reproductive body consists of single cell or small group of cells which become peri of the feral organisms and grow into new organisms. It will form as a result of mitosis or meiosis, and it will form as a result of mitosis or meiosis, and it will germinate and reproduce when there is a favorable condition. A spore it will only germinate when there is a favorable condition, as you can see here. So we are going to talk about an overview structure of some protista. As you can see here, the first one is pylon protopyta. An example, as I see, is clamidominance. It's 10 micrometer wide. So in the structure of clamidominance, there's a plagiolum, which is responsible for movement, let me say locomotion. There's a baku, which is the help to store water, put waste product, let me say it helps to maintain the balance or water balance. And there's a nucleus that is control center of the cell. It tells the cell what to do and what to not to do. And there's a chloroplasm. By use of chloroplasm, would help them to make manufacture their own food. And there is pyrinoid. Pyrinoid, as you can see here. It also makes function on photosynthesis. It helps for piecing carbon into carbon hydrogen during photosynthesis. And there's a cell wall, like it's helpful for protection. It also helps for to grow like it all. And also it allows like H2O, oxygen, carbon dioxide to pass into the cell. And there's a mitochondria, the power host is used for respiration and also the source of energy and there is ear spot that is stigma ear spot is photosensory organelle which is perceive which perceive light level and direction okay that direction of light it will responsible for that and there is contra contracted buckles contracted bottle con contracted bottle is control intracellular water balance the water balance inside the cell is controlled that intracellular water balance by accumulating and, ex and expelling excess water out of the cells to survive under hypotonic conditions. So it, this is typical structure of clamidominance. And we are going to the next step that is diatoms. As you can see here, this is structure of diatoms. And um, the next under phylum protozoa, that is amoeba. This is protista with its animal-like feature. Firstly, it has pseudophodes, which is responsible for movement and locomotion. There's a food buckle, storage of food, food particle outside, as you can see here, and there's a membrane or cell membrane. And also, there's a cytoplasm. We explained about it. A nucleus control center and contractive buckle. It helps to maintain the internal water balance. And the next one we are going to talk about is paramecium. So, paramecium is another protozoan protista. It has firstly two cytoplasm, ecto and endo. Ecto is outside and endo is inside. Micronucleus, that is, has two nucleus. Micro, that is bigger, and micro, micro is smaller. And it has an oral groove. Oral glue, mouth like opening in a cilius, which serve as to guide food particle. Let me see, collected food particle, then transported to gullet, then into the food buckle for digestion. Then the next one is gullet. It's a vocal cavity, like a mouth cavity, where food is converted into food buckle. Then there is a cytostom. Cytostom is a special specialized organ for phagocytosis. Then we will talk about we will talk about cytoprocts. Cytoprocts is a food organ of extraction of indi indigestible waste products contained in the food buckle. Then there is a new new food buckle, as you can see here. Then um, Paramecium has at least four or three main buckle. The first one is anterior buckle, anterior contracted buckle, food buckle, 
and also for serial contracted buckle. Contracted buckle is responsible to maintain the water balance inside the cell. So it has anterior and posterior, and that's a put buckle. As I say, put buckle is responsible, is a place where digestion take place after lysosome foods with the food bad go. Then there is a follicle, is a cell membrane of paramecium. It has its own feature. There is a cilia which is responsible for attachment during a sexual reproduction. There is trichocyte. Trichocyte um, is organs of defense against predators. That is trichocyte, organs of defense against anything that will harm paramecium. Um, another example of protozoan protista is called Triponosome. Um, it has a nucleus control center of the cell. Um, there's a Golgi body that modifies all the proteins that come from nucleus through basicle through um, rough endoplasmic reticulum. And there is endoplasmic reticulum. There is a lysosome which, which involves in pagotosis removal of those waste products or breaking down of those waste products. And there is a plagiolum which is responsible for movement and it has VSG which is function VSG cut which is function as selectively remove VSG specialized antibody from the cell surface is to remove that VSG specialized antibodies from the cell surface and there is mitochondrium which is responsible for respiration the power host let me see the source of energy and also there is kinostoplasm this is a special region of mitochondrium that have, let me see, that protects or hide the most complex and unusual mitochondrial DNA found in nature. And also, there is another structure that is plagella pocket. I have mentioned it. And this is just a short description about the structure of trypanosome from plagella pocket, Golgi bodies, nucleus, endoplasmic reticulum, plagellum. VSG cord and mitochondrium, lysosome, endosome, and ketoplasm. Then we are going to talk about igluna. Igluna is the one that has both plant and animal like feature. As I said before, it's a borderline between plants and animal. Um, in the structure of igluna, it has plagella, which is responsible for movement. Gullet. Gullet is a place where food is converted into food baku, and there is ear spot, which is responsible for perceive light and direction, light level and direction, and the reservoir is the storage of nutrient. It's the storage of all nutrient in the iglena. And contractor buckle, that is, we mentioned about it, and chloroplast that will help to manufacture the ampoule by use of chlorophyll, and contractor fiber. Contractor fiber um, involved in doing cell divisions. And also there is a nucleus, control center of the cells, Nucleus that surround the nucleus and pellicle. Pellicle enable cells to have exceptional flexibility and contractility as they move. Let me say it control what is going on and what is going out in the cell of Euglena. And the next step we are going to talk about is a life cycle of some protista. Example amoeba and clamodominance. The first one on that life cycle of our one, they undergo a sexual reproduction by reproduction of binary pigeon. Let me say by reproducing into two, that is binary pigeon, that is mitosis. They undergo mitosis by a sexual reproduction. While under climate dominance, firstly, they reproduce asexually by mitosis and then produce spores. Then, then that spores they will germinate and grow into the adult of chlamydominance. And they also reproduce asexual, sexually chlamydominance by fertilization, production of male and female garment. After fertilization, then to form zygote, they undergo meiosis and repeat the process continuously. So what I want you to understand here, chlamydominance undergo asexual by reproducing spore. Then the, it undergo sexual reproduction by producing of male and female gametes to form zygos, the process of meiosis, and then they reproduce new one and recirculation. Next kingdom we're going to talk about is kingdom Pongai. This is our next chapter.
they are eukaryotic multicellular and few unicellular organisms. That unicellular example is yeast. They are taloid in shape, which means their body is not distinct divided into root, stem, and leaf. No chlorophyll, so therefore they are non photosynthesis organisms. All are non motile except slim molds, which is animal like, it has animal like features. And store carbohydrate in form of glycogen, not starch. Reproduce rapidly by spores, which means asexually. Mostly are saprophytes, feed on dead decaying organic matter. They feed on dead decaying and they decompose them. Fungi and bacteria are economically important decomposer, decomposers. Some are parasites, living, feeding on living organisms, that is a parasitic fungi, in which they cause disease, especially in plants. They made a branching thread like structure called hyper or hyper. This branching throughout the substrate in which the fungi is growing and absorb food. Branching hyper form a network called mycelium or mycelia. That is plural. Um, hyphen have a cell wall with made of cheating, a nitrogenous, a nitrogenous materials that is similar to cellular cell wall. That is similar to cell wall. Virgin cell wall is not present in some fungi. Example, slam locks. Um, example of fungi is a mushroom, toadstool, bread mold, yeast, and slam locks. And also the study of fungi is called mycology. So in mycology is who study of fungi. Some importance and usefulness of fungi. Improve soil fertility and recycle in inorganic material in nature. Use in industrial example, fermentation process such as wine making, beer making and yeast used in bakeries as raging agents. Used to produce many important antibiotics. Some mushrooms are edible and serve as food. Negative types of fungi. They spoil food, cause disease, especially in crotch plants. And the next chapter we're going to talk about under fungi is classification of fungi based on mode of reproduction and their structure. The first one is Chytridomycota. They are the most primitive types of fungi. They are aquatic with plagiolite gamete. Example, Rhizophidium spirotica. spirotica. Zygomycota are also called zygote fungi because they are rep they reproduce sexual spores called zygospores. Example, Rhizopus species. Ascomacota are also called sac o cup fungi due to their sexual reproduction structure that resemble to sac o cup. Example, yeast o neurosperm. The next one is Basidomycota are also called cloth fungi like due to their sexual structure look like cloth shape. Example, mushroom, tots, stole, etc. And the next one is Deuteromycota, also called fungi impacti, because they lack of sexual reproduction. You have to take note of this one. A question may come into you what fungi do not have a sexual reproduction? But this sometimes is not for A level elementary class, okay? Sometimes. But I highly, I just told you in order to know all of this one. And we will talk about our view on structure of some fungi. And it is just a review. If you want full review about full explanation about structure, we'll upload it in our next video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also turn on the notification bell so that by the time you listen to the video, you're the first one to get notice. As you can see here, the structure of bread mold. Look at this. It has a spores, there is talon, there is rhizos, and the spores that is in circular. And look at this. You can get it. That is bread mold. And under yeast cell, as you can see here, I talk about yeast cell. You can see the structure, it has cell nucleus and we're writing about the cell it has. So the next chapter we're going to talk about is Kingdom Plantae. This consists of set of family of green plants. They are multicellular and non-motile. Have a cellular cell wall. They are autotropic and feed by photosynthesis. They can make manufacture their own food. Chloroply in the chloroplasts of the cells. They have chlorophyll, which is chloroplasts of the cell. They divide it into three pylons: Talopyta, Barophyta, Trachopyta. Talopyta and Barophyta are non are, are non vascular plants. They are non vascular plants and lack of conducting system. Um, we talk about that vascular, vascular plants. While Trachopyta are vascular plants, well conducting system.
when we talk about vascular plant a plant that can conduct material in from the outside of the from the inside of the body that is from the stem or from the root up to the body up to the stem or shoots that is conducting system so do not have that one so we are going to talk about pylon talopita the first one they are talopites are also called algae are simple green plants all of them are aquatic reproduced asexually by cell division or fragmentation and spores or spores also reproduced sexually by formation of male and female gametes they have a thread like pelamentous or plat talus body that don't have a true root stem and leaf they lack conducting systems example are red brown or green algae mainly are seaweed except some green algae are found in fresh water red and brown algae have other colored pigments example of some algae is like the cyanopacopita blue green algae or cyanopita chloropicopita that is green algae and also there is iglonopicopita iglonoid and also there is the bacillopacopita that is the atom and also there is cryptopacopita and also there is rhodopacopita that is red algae and others there is a lot of algae which we will talk about in our next video specifically all you need to do to stay around to subscribe to our channel so we will talk about some example of talopita most officially simple green algae the first one is spirogera look at the typical cells of spirogera it contains prenoid nuclear cell cytoplasm cytoplasmic strand vacuole cell membrane and other and chloroplasts which means they can manufacture their own food so spirogera is a simple green algae that is found in ponds and ditches it's made of hair like green plaments each plament is made of a single change of identical cells this plament drip passively on water another tiny green plant alga is called volbox which consists of vol which consists of a bowl of identical cells each a varying flagella this coordinate beating of flagella bring about a movement of volbox this just about some structure of green alga spirogera and volbox the next we are going to talk about is baropita that is pylon baropita pylon baropita they are the most primitive of the plant they are the most primitive of plants mostly are seedless plants found on the land but in damp shady place where water is readily available they are plantain and grow a few inch tall due to the lack of vascular building hence they are non vascular plants reproduce and despise by means of spores no three size baropite as water cannot travel adequately from root to the top to the top they are only plant where gametophyte end stage is dominant and larger than superpropite to end and classification of baropita baropita have been classified into two libawort and moses class number 1 is heptica and it example of libawort it has a flat body mass resemble the liver shape hence the name drive it has a simpler structure than moses some say it has a ribbon like ribbon like platinum body it has an umbrella like structure that produce gamete called saprophyte generation it has a cup like structure on the talus called gamma cup which function in asexual reproduction class number 2 is moses they lack vascular bundle and contain more photosynthetic cells in their leaves have a structure that resemble the leaves though are not true leaves but is called a called scales conduct water in their stem to only short distance here are the characteristics of moses not motile male gamete is called spermatozoa or spermatozoon or sperms while non motile female gamete are called ova or ovum or eggs is the fan of how you want to call it so so now without being say let's talk about some structure of liverwort and um moses look at this the first diagram is indicate the structure of liverwort liverwort it has an umbrella like structure that produce gamete and is called saprophyte generation as you can see it's saprophyte and also there is on the talus there is a cup like structure called gamma cups which is function in asexual reproduction this is typical diagram of liverwort and there is a diagram of moses as you can see here life cycle of diagram and life cycle of some moses 
spore producing and at the top then spore are released then each can grow to form a new gametophyte and can grow to recycle the regeneration as you can see here so this is just short description about liverwort and mothers if you want full tutorial and full explanation all you need to do to subscribe to this channel and you can expect our next video we will upload it and we will make full explanation about it let's go to the soft phylum that is pylon trichopita um phylum trichopita they are vascular plants that conduct water and food they have conducted system vascular bonding plants okay um they are the largest group of plants which include number one seed plants familiar with flowering plants number two spore bearing plants that bear spores number three non-flowering plants as you can see here let's talk about the first one pterodopita these are also called ferns. Our land plants have a root system and leaves similar to polarian plants. They possess some character of saprophytes and seed producing plants. They are sometimes called vascular seedless plants. These stereotypes, they can't produce seeds. They don't have a seed. Spore producing plants is dominant saprophyte. They have a dominant saprophyte. Need water during fertilizations and their stem grow horizontally below the ground which is also called rhizomes <clears throat> small root grow from rhizomes into the soil um, farms leaves are also called prawns that is the pitas leaves are called prawns prawns are called prawns are quail when young and enroll as they grow and mature prawns bear spores on the underside okay they bear spores on that size Prawns branch repeatedly divided into two. Um, it is also called diatomous branching. Conductive vessels present into the roots, rhizomes, and prawns. So here is a typical life cycle of Pterodopita. As you can see, a young gametopita, mature gametopita, egg uh, male and female, male and female. They form zygote, they form after fertilization, they form zygote and they can reproduce young one and the regeneration will continue. So now we are going to talk about spermatopita, that is flowering plant, seed producing plants. They are the seed producing vascular plants. They have well vascular plants. They are more advanced than non-vascular plants and plants. Okay. They are um, well developed root, stem, and leaf, which means they are vascular plants, they have they can conduct anything um seed contain uh in, their seeds contain an embryo that develop to form a fertilized egg example all plants we see around us they are you they are true plants no need water for fertilization sometimes they divided into two gynomous palms and aegeous palms so this is what i divided into two gynomous palms and aegeous palms gynomous palms they are plant with neck seeds. They have a neck seeds. Don't bear flowers. They don't have bear flowers. Uh, trees, shrubs, mostly evergreen with needle-like leaves. Some like scale-like leaves or broad-like leaves. Seeds are born in special structure called cones. Their seeds is born in special structure called cones. Example, cycade, ginkgoid, and conifers. They make up the world temperate region porous, produce soft wood, which is used for timber wood and paper making. Also yield, resign and to painting. Pen, pear, spores, an example of conipas. Look at this carefully. So these are a spermatopita and has angiosperms and gynomosperms. Angiosperms. We will talk about angiosperms. Are the largest group in the plant kingdom. They are the largest group. Spermatopita are the largest group. And under spermatophyta, angiosperm are the largest group. They are adapted to almost every kind of habitat. One of the features of them, highly involved when gynomot they are highly involved than gynomot gynomosperms. They are highly involved than gynomosperms, gynomosperms, well developed vascular building, xylem, that is, we we'll talk about it under flowering plant, xylem and poilin. We we'll talk about it. True flowers, fruits and seeds, which are protected within the fruits. Their flowers is protected within the food. Mostly crops and ornament plants. Our most example of them are trees, shrub, grasses, and herbs. They are grouped into two. Let me say they divide into two. 
diclotilidium and monocotilidium. So we are going to talk about this difference between diclotilidium, their structure and even their features now in this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also turn on the notification bell so that by the time you listen to the video, you will be the first one to get notice. So, dicotyledons. These are angiosperms that are the most primitive angiosperms. These are the most primitive angiosperms. They are the largest trees with spreading branches. They are the large tree with spreading, spreading branches. Bear seeds which have two seed leaves or cotyledons. They have two seeds. That is important to take note. Vascular buildings are arranged in a regular pattern. These are dicotyledons. Plural part exists in a group of four or five. Their plural part are sepal, petal, pistils, and stamen. Lips have a veins arranged in a branch network, have a tap root system, and also they undergo secondary growth. Example, hibiscus, and there's a lot of examples, but the common one is either granon, melon, and yam, papaw, and also copy. Monocotyledons, they are the most advanced plants. These dicotyledons are the most primitive, but the monocotyledons are the most advanced plants. So high degree of adaptation to their environment, bear it with one cotyledon each. Vascular building of the stems are scatter, not like regular pattern. Plural plant exists in group of three or multiple of threes. Leaves have a vein running parallel to one another not branch and have a perverse root systems and undergo they don't undergo secondary growth example zemes that have a one seeds and also there is oil palm there's a lot of them so now we will talk about the difference between monocotyledon and dicotyledon we will compare them and see what will happen on that seed monocotyledon has a one cotyledon while dicotyledon has a two cotyledon on that root, monocotyledon has a pebrous root, while dicotyledon have a tough root. Flowers, they are petal in a multiple of trees. While on that dicotyledon, there are flowers in the multiple, in the four, they have four or five petals of flower. On that leaf, they are narrow, parallel, they are narrow federal beans, that is their leaf. While on that dicotyledon, they are branched, they are not parallel. And under vascular building, their vascular building, as you can see here, is scatter, scattered, that is monocotyledon. While under dicotyledon, their vascular building is not scatter, it's not just like a ring. So, how we understand it? Let's talk about the next chapter that is Kingdom Animalia. We will talk about Kingdom Animalia. Kingdom Animalia are larger than the whole kingdom, they are the largest kingdom in the living things kingdoms. So, these are eukaryotic and multicellular organisms. I say eukaryotic because they are true nucleus and they are multicellular organisms, they have multiple cells. And they lack cell wall and chloroplast, which means they lack cell wall and they cannot manufacture their own food to reason chloroplasm. Um, chloroplast, they are heterotropic mode of nutrition. Hence, non photosynthesis or we, are called them, we can call them, they are ready-made food. They cannot measure it. They have to get it ready. Mostly are motile organisms. Most of them are motile organisms. They can move from one place to another or by means of an external stimuli. They bias in body size, shapes, and functions. They have different diversity in the body and size and functions. They are classified into two main groups. The first one is invertebrate, animal with backbones. And the animal without backbones, that is invertebrate, without backbones. The second one is vertebrate, animal with backbones. Um, the next is division and subdivision of animals are based on several important features, which includes body symmetry, body designs, and body cabbage. Kingdom animalia division and subdivisions are based on main important groups, that is body symmetry, body designs, and body cavity. So, body symmetry, this means the body of these animals can be cut along its axis in any plane, not plant, I'm exactly right, plants to give two identical. And example of body symmetry, the first one is asymmetrical body. 
asymmetrical body is a body which have two sides or half that are not the same or not symmetrical example of animal that exhibit asymmetrical body is sponge radial symmetrical body that is another example of body symmetrical body which can be cut along it is isaacs in any plan to give two identical half example of this is jellyfish cinnamon and etc so the last one is bilaterally symmetrical body body can cut along it is axis in only one plane to give two identical halves you need to understand it only one plane to give two identical halves either is right or left sides example of this bilaterally symmetrical body is platform butter bread and all butter bread and in insects etc the next one we will discuss some key friends to take notes to remember about or on bilaterally symmetrical body the first one is anterior sides anterior side when you hear means it simply means near or toward the front of something posterior side which simply means near or toward the back of something dorsal being passed to back when you hear something dorsal back of the sides ventral ventral refers to front of the body as you can see here the shape of this look at this dorsal side anterior side ventral side and posterior side of gut this is bilateral symmetrical body so we are going to talk about the next one that is body design body design it will be number one sac like body few phylometric animals have a sac like body with a single mouth leading to the good cavity and also they take input and get rid of waste through this opening okay some have a sac like body with a good cavity and they take off put with good cavity and get rid of this put to good cavity the next one is tubular tubular body majority of animals have a tubular body with a good cavity force that can often add the anterior that is near or to wait front of something that is near or to wait front of something that is anterior and posterior end of the body okay do we have the, for example let me say we have mouth and anus we can remove it they take food through an anterior opening that is mouth and they eliminate undigested food through posterior opening that is anus so how you understand this body design we are going to the next one that is body cavity most animals undergo a line of early tissue during embryonic developments these layers are called germ layers that is body cavity diploplas some animals have two germ layers that is ectoderm and endoderm these are called diploplas triploplas some animals have a three germ layers that is ectoderm endoderm and mesoderms not germ layers are primary layers of cells in an embryo of animals also as the embryo develops these cells differentiate to form various body tissues a triploplas may develop an internal body cavity from mesoderms called culium a triploplan that lacks culium or let me see body cavity are called aculinomates example is platforms animal with true culium or body cavity are called culinomites a third group of triploplas that have a post body cavity or they don't have okay let me see that have a post culiums are called pseudocilomites example are round rules so this is a typical example as you can see here between diploplas and triploplas there is a ectoderm as you can see here that is the green one and there is a digestive cavity or body cavity that is the one in the circular that is white one and there is a ectoderm that is the blue one the ecta that is when you hear something ecto which means external and there is a non-living layer under diploplasm that is the one that is is its ash and also there is a mesoderms under triploplasm that is the red one so overview and body plans in between aculamite cytosolamite and culamite so um aculamite example is platforms um eucoculamite is true culamite that is anilda mulux arthrot um echinoderms and chodata kodata is it how i supposed to pronounce this and example of pseudocylamide are um, round wombs so a triploplas may be acylamide, eucylamide or pseudocylamide 
is in you could you can still might have a body cavity within the mesoderms called coelum as you can see here you can still might there's a body cavity they have a body cavity within the mesoderms there's a mesoderms with the red one and called coelum as you can see here there's a body cavity which line with mesoderm tissue as you can see there's a mesoderm tissue there pseudocellular mice have a similar body cavity but lined with pseudoderms and endoderm when you look at um, pseudocellular mice there's a body cavity but lined with mesoderms as you can see there's a mesoderm with red one and endoderm as you can see here there's endoderm so hope you understand it so the next we are going to talk about imbatabred that is the first classification as you can see we have mentioned they have classified into two butterbread and imbatabred there are 23 imbatabred pila we will briefly discuss eight of more pila these are eight we are going to discuss phylum for that is the first one phylum coelentra phylum plantihymid phylum nematoda phylum anilda phylum mollusca phylum atropoda and phylum codata codata so the first one phylum for vera the name derived from two words ferus which means four and ferro which means bear this simply means four bearing these are commonly known as sponge they are simple aquatic invertebrates mostly marine that do not do not move above they are attached to rocks or shells some are solitary while other are colonial live in colonies which are motile at lever stage those that are live in colonial are motile in their mother stage that is young they have a bus or cylinder like body shape which have full of spore or them say which have full of pores and channels that allow water to pass circulate through them they are a symmetrical body and few form radial symmetrical body we have discussed them and also they are the they are primitive multicellular organisms let me see primitive multicellular animals they have no true tissue which means they have no vascular bonding the lack nervous system or sense organs they may be essential or sedentary with a pre-swimming lava water move into the body through small opening called oste and eliminate waste through fewer and large opening called oscula the interior body is either hollow or permitted by a canal lined with tonocyte. The interior space is called sponge coil. Cell wall is made of two layers which are loosely arranged with gelatinous matri ma matrix between them. The outer layer consists of platinate cells and numerous special cells with pores. The inner layer has many plagiolate cells called collar cells. Sponge are either monoecious they are monoecious which means they may have both male and female reproductive organs on one individual they produce asexually by either fragmentation or brooding also they reproduce sexually by producing egg first then sperm later that is fertilization is also internal so here is a typical an image or i say illustration of sponge that we found in the water as you can see here there's an image here as I say, well known diagram or just structure, and that's what we talk about here that is oscula that is eliminated waste through this fewer and large opening called oscula, and also there is oste that is water move through the small opening, and there is a sponge core, and also there is a mesophile. This is the basic sponge body plants. So, the next one we're going to talk about is foiling coelentra. The name derived from a Greek word knight, which means nito. The phylum, formerly called Cynedrians, Cynedria, are exclusively aquatic. Cynedria have no head, no centralized nervous systems, and no specialized organs for gaseous exchange, and no excretory system, and no circulatory system. They don't have any one of these. They do have a nerve net, which functions as carrying signal from sensory cells and to contracted cells. Group of cells in a nerve net form a nerve cup that may be essential for rapid transmission. That is, group of cells from the nerve net. The phylum Cynodaria include animals that show radial or bilateral symmetrical body. They have radial or bilateral. 
some are slightly more complex than sponge they are slightly more complex because they have specialized cells and tissues some are pre-living and some are colony organisms they live in colony and they are diploplasm that is their jam layers they have ectoderm and endoderm they have one opening and one body cavity named elentro or gascular gascular or gascular or gastrovascular cavity that take part both in digestion and water circulations the positions of special they, they, they possess specialized cells in ectoderm known as sinocyte or stinging cells containing organelle called senite or nematocytes that is specialized cells in ectoderms most coelentra have body form in their life cycle most coelentra have a two body form in their life cycle the first one is stationary cylindrical that is hydropolyp this may be either sicils polyp or stack the pre-swimming umbrella shape medusa we can call it bell example of these animals that exhibit fully are hydra cinnamons and coral polyps example of animal that exhibits medusa are jellyfish some poly live singly example of this polyp that live singly are cinnamons and hydra some poly live in colonies example of animal that exhibit fully the life in colonies are coral polyps reproduce asexually by brooding and also uh, reproduce sexually by producing male and female gametes classification of synodidium or elantra the first one is class anzozoa this includes cinnamon siphon muscor all synodidium that exhibit a system bud polyp body plants only these are any any synodidium that exhibit cecil cecil polyp body plants only there's no more modusa stage so these are class andosa then the next one is class um cysposa cysposa these are jellyfish these are swimming with medusa stage behind dominant and polyp stage often reduced so they are swimming with medusa they are animal that exhibits they are synodidium that exhibits medusa stitch class cuboza these are both jellies includes jellies that are square in section in cross-sectional and also known as box jellyfish cubozone are anatomically similar to jellyfish they are anatomically similar to jellyfish class hydroza it is a um, let me see a device group that include all fresh waters in the rain as well as many marine form they are the diverse group hydroza and has a both sicil member such as hydra and colony swimming such as portugos mangua manua mangua is it how i supposed to pronounce it so let me give you some example of synodidium as you can see here the first one is cinnamons coral sepens jellyfish hydra and portugues manua manua so these are the typical example of synodidium from cinnamons up to hydra and portugues manua so we are going to the next um, pylon that is plantihymai derived from the greek word platus which means plat and helmet which means womb meaning they are those are ventrally compressed which means plats example are planarian planarians plux and typhoon platum have a sac like body plux is leaf like or ribbon like in typhoon they live in fresh water drain stream etc and some ex uh, some species live in salty water or saline water some members live in damp and moist soil so most members of this phylum are ecto or endo parasite that is split and type one some are pre living as predator or scambage example pelanaria they are scambage they are predator they are acelomite triploplastic and they have a body bilateral symmetry and also they have unsegmented they are unsegmented they don't have a segment plenty helmet have a simple anterior brain and simple ladder like nabo system consists of pair of nerve cord that are responsible for signals their good has only one opening okay their good has only one opening they can do it through mouth and eliminate through mouth and no circulatory system there is no circulatory system on plenty helmet they don't have simple extraterrestrial or osmoregulatory structure which network of tubules 
body is covered they do have simple excretory or osmoregulatory structure with a network of tubules body is covered by a thick cortical with sulcus or hooks presence digestive system is incomplete or absent in some species and also have an anal opening okay they have some anal opening reproduce asexually by dividing into two by dividing into a long medium plane okay um also reproduce sexually and many of them are hemo hemo or let me say are monoecious they have both male and female reproductive system in one individual that is plantihalmide so let's talk about classification of plantihalmide class to balerian to balerian example is palinarium they are the most mostly pre-living platforms some to balerian are capable of remarkable regeneration from just part of it itself even from a small fragment they are produced by fragmentation as you can see here to balerian did add one that exhibit from recognition in asexual reproduction class tenemoda and tenematoda example plux are external parasite of molux and many other groups including humans and next class is cestoda example tapon cestoda are endoparasite indo endoparatistic in good of batic bread they are parasite endoparasite parasite in batic bread butter bread they don't have a mouth or digestive cavity the cestodas or tapums are internal parasite mainly of butter bread you have to take note of this so these are the three main classes of plenty halmite so let me give you our view an example of some plenty halmite so example this is the typical structure of planarian it's a free living platform that has an incomplete digestive system an excretory system which network of tubules throughout the body a nervous system made of nerve cords running the length of the body with concentrated nerve of nerves and photosensory and chemosensory cells that at the anterior so look at this typical structure there is a transverse nerves intestine parines mouth and anus excretory canal and also there is a peripheral nerves longitudinal nerve cords and several ganglia and there is a ear spots so under the nucleus overview there is a nucleus plem cell waste fluid and cilia for movement tubules and tubule cells this is an ex and there is an excretory pore so this is a typical example and structure of plantihalmite another example of some plantihalmites are typhoon as you can see here the typical structure of typhoon it has divided into three men this collects immatures immature progolytide and mature progolytide this collects contain the sucker the head and neck sucker for sucking head and neck while immature there is a, the whole body and there's a segment at the end so this is a typical structure of um typhoon and there is also cholera chitinous hook at the at the at the top of the type one and also there's an example of plux as you can see here so the next we are going to talk about is um pylum um nematoda nematoda so the name nematoda is derived from a greek word again nemos which means thread commonly known as uh, commonly known as or called round wood live as a parasite in plants and animal or are pretty living in the soil or water they are bilaterally symmetrical the body is bilaterally symmetrical long slender body that taper at the both sides they are unsegmented and they have triploblastic um that is body cavity organisms and pseudocelamite they have um false um true cavity um a flexible but tough exoskeletal system or internal skeletal system which offer protection and supports they have no circulatory systems have no non specialized excretory systems and nitrogenous waste products are removed by their fusion so they have no circulatory systems they have non specialized excretory system and nitrogen waste products are removed by their fusions um round wood has a good mouth and anus at the opposite end with two opening are they responsible for feeding and eliminating waste that is good mouth and anus and anus they are responsible for feeding eliminating waste and and etc and it reproduces asexually unlike platform is usually separated in round wood okay reproduce asexually while platform is separated okay cell as well parasitic round wood are economically important are economically important example of this in nematoda 
are pin wound, run wound, hook wound, pilarial wounds, and trade wounds. So, overview an example of some nematoda. The first one is round wound. This is a typical example of how round wound will look like. And the next one is pin wound, and also the next one is hook wound. So, as you can see here, um, then we are going to talk about phylum anilida. Anilida. So, phylum anilida. The name means ridge from a Greek word analatus or Latin word analus, which means small ring. They are segmented womb found in marine, terrestrial, terrestrial, and freshwater habitats. Um, the presence of water or humidity, humidity is a critical factor of their surviving in terrestrial habitats. Their presence of water, humidity is their survival, is a critical factor that, that makes them to survive. This phylum consists of earthworm leech and various marine wolves giving many different names that is sun wolf or two boobs except trust they are triploblastic in triploblastic um, body cavity and also they have meso that is triploblastic they have ecto ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm bilateral symmetrical body and body is covered with thin cortical uh, which means does not need to be mold or for grow um, development is typically protostomic Okay, their development is typically prostatomic, which means describing an animal, which is both, which is, uh, which means describing an animal in which the mouth develops first during embryotic genesis and second opening development into anus. The mouth will develop first, then the anus. They have a complete closed circulatory system and well developed nervous systems. That is anilda. They can live pretty, okay, they can be pretty living, they can be pretty living. They can be parasitic and they can be mutualistic or commensalistic. Parasitic, mutualism, they cannot harm and commensalism, they cannot harm. Major advance of this phylum include they have true chylum, segmentation, both longitudinal and circular muscles, and for most, some of them, are more advanced extraordinary systems, which is ciliate, granulate, coil tubules, and name nephedrome. They are particular segment body plant Okay, there are particular segment body plane result in repetition of internal and external feature in which body segments, in each body segments. This type of body plan is called metamorphisms. So they have a metamorphism body plan because they are particular segment body plan result in repetition of internal and external feature in each body segments. And this metamorphism simply means having body similar to segment, having body similar segment having body of a similar segment that's what i mean and reproduce asexually which are monoecious they both one and both one individual have a, have male and female reproductive systems and also um classification of anilda number one is oligochita this is a typical example of esum they are the most abundant members of this class distinguished by presence of the um slitilium, a ring structure in the skins that secrete mucus to bind mating individual and form a prototic cocoon for the eggs. They also have a few reduced chitia. Oligo means few. Chitas means here. You need to understand which means oligo chita. The next class is polychita. These are marine rooms or sea rooms. This chita or polychita are many are many and arranged using pressure plate pair appendage on each segment called Parapodia. The next class is in Herodinia. Herodinia, they, this include leech. The significant difference between leech and other anida include development of socus at the anterior and posterior end of, and the absence of cheetahs. So this Herodinia, they have an ascent of cheetahs. So as you can see here, this is a typical structure of S room. We can find it in the S. So the next phylum we are going to talk about is phylum mollusca. Most of Molucks are marine and the rest live in water or land. You can see they live in most environments. Their body is bilaterally symmetrical. The body has more than two cell layers, which means triploblastic tissues and organs. Body without cavity, that is acolamide, and body possess two grid with mouth and anus. They had a mouth opening and anus to eliminate waste products. Has a soft, unsegmented body with muscular put, which may be adapted for crawling, burrowing, or swimming. Body is covered by a soft tissue called mantle. 
Mantle is an anus opening into mantle cavity which forms between mantle and body mass. Has a nervous system, an open circulatory system which has an altar. Has a gaseous exchange organs called gills. What's in there? Gills. Gaseous exchange to gills or lungs in a mantle cavity. Has a pair of kidneys, normally asexual or sex separatist. An example of these are snails, bilba, mussels, clams, scallops, and also octopus, squids. Classification of mollusca. Class number one is gas, gastropoda. These are snails and slugs. They are the largest and most advanced class of mollusks. Class number two is bilbia. Bilba, be, bilba, be, is it? Bilba, be. These are clams, ossies, or ossitas, and scallops. Class number three is pelicifoda. These are mussels. Class number last is Celephoda. Celephoda, which means head put. These are octopus, sweets, and quitter fish. These are pre swimmers. Some are periodito. Nervous system is more advanced. Brain is the largest of any invertebrate. Um, then sensory system will develop. Well developed sensory system. Most cephalopite have a complex A, have a closed psychology system, and sex are separated. Um, gonoristic, gonotoristic, gonochoristic, that is sex are separated. So here the main picture of classification of mollusca, and these are, as I say, they contain snails and slugs, um, then octopus and other things. So we are going to talk about a review and example of some mollusca. Um, so example of mollusca, as I say, the first one is snails. Oh, let me see snail. This is a typical image of snail. As you can see, we can find it in our house in a bush, and there's an octopus. We mainly find it in the water, and there is a scallops, a scallops also located inside water, and there is a sweets, or oh, let me see, pita fish, and also the last one is sweets. Squid, squid, that's how I supposed to pronounce it. Then we will talk about failing arthropoda. Arthropoda. Failing arthropoda. Um, they are the largest failing in the animal kingdom. Failing arthropoda. They are the largest kingdom. But well, let me see, they are the largest phylum. Have a segmented body, which means the metameric being, they are metameric. Exoskeleton, molten or Cecidis, um, side is side. This is the exoskeleton has three layers. The lipoprotein outer layer provide water probing, the chitin middle layer provide heart protections, and also there is a flexible inner layer allow movement. These are the three main layer of arthropods. Joint appendix grows to form a head, thorax, and abdomen, and abdomen allow movement, feeding. And also, these are proboscis, 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 and mandibles. They are responsible for movement, the production, and sensory organs. These are antenna and pillars. Oh, pillar! Let me say pillar. Joint appendix groove to form a head, thorax, and abdomen that allow movement and feeding. So the next one is they have well developed sensory organs. That is A and antenna. The reason A and antenna. Numerous pair of limbs for swift and complex movement, bilaterally symmetrical in most cases. Body has more than one cell layers, tissues, and organs. Body cavity is a true that is a uroclamide, uroclamide, which make the form of hemoclamide or body blood cavity. The uh, most of process is straight good with the anus in most cases. Nervous system include a brain and ganglia. Okay, also they have a special respiratory stem from a different habitat. Um, Testerial use stretching, while aquatic use gills. They possess an often or lacuna circulatory system, with a simple chamber heart, one or more arteries, and no veins in most cases. Reproduction is normally asexual, and sex is almost separated. They feed on every Things and life on everywhere. Um, we will talk about classifications of arthropoda. Number one is class crustacea, insecta, 
Arachnida and Mariofolda. These are the classifications of Arthropoda. We will talk about class crustaceans. These are aquatic free living animals which are less familiar microscopist crustaceans. They are most familiar microscopist and also some are important serve as a beta link in the aquatic food chain. Example crew. Um, crustacea simply means shells which are crayfish, lobster, bilbob, crabs, shrimp, venacle, grain, etc. Members are all aquatic and they have a gill. They exhibit gill for respirations. They have five pairs of legs. Crustaceans have a two body region, the saplothrus and the abdomen. Saplothrus fuse with head and thorus. The head bear a joint pillars or antenna. Stark compound ears are joint mouth parts. Thoras have a two pairs of antenna, mandible type mouth parts, two pairs of maxilla, and two pairs of millipedes, all of which are formed for a modified appendage. Confound ears are made of many separated lenses, each with a light sensitive cell underneath it. Overview an example of some crustaceans. They are crayfish, lobster, crabs, um, shrimps, and also there is a bill box. These are the examples of crustaceans. Then the next we will talk about class insecta. Above 70% of all known species of animals are insects. Mainly are land animals but adapted to all environment and they are only invertebrates that can fly. They are testicular but considered as an aquatic. Members have a three pairs of legs, one or two pairs of wings. Their body is divided into three sections. The head, the thorax and the abdomen. The head bears a face of antenna and confound ears. The thorax divided into three with space of a leg. The expression by means of a network of often air tube or trachea. These two have a often called spiracle to the exterior. Excretion by malfigian tubules. Most feed on plant material while some feed of animal tissues and waste. They undergo metamorphosis. They undergo metamorphosis. metamorphosis. Example house plant, mosquito, cockroach, grasshopper, butterfly plant, and ant. Life cycle of some insects. Complete and incomplete metamorphosis. These are the two main life cycles of insects. Metamorphosis is a type of insect development or is the process of transformation for an immature form of an adult form in two or more distinct stages. This is, or is what we call, is what is called, is what called metamorphosis. Complete metamorphosis. Complete metamorphosis is a type of development that occurs through four stages. That occur through four stages, you have to take note of this. The stage number one is egg, larva, pupu, and adults. This kinds of transformation is also called homometaboly, that is complete metamorphosis, where the larva body is always marked differently in form from that of adult. These are the typical structure, let me say, of a view of complete metamorphosis in four stages. The first one is larva, then pupa, then okay, the first one is egg lava pupa butterfly that is the main butterfly that is the life cycle of complete metamorphosis when we talk about incomplete metamorphosis is a type of development that occur through three stages egg name adi that's how i supposed to pronounce it sorry for my pronunciations but egg name and adult also known as hemimetaboly this in this stage, the pupa stage is not developed during incomplete metamorphosis, which means there is a sign of pupa in incomplete metamorphosis. And as you can see here, there is an egg, a small neck, and big neck, then it will be turned to adults. Um, then we will talk about comparison between two types of metamorphosis. As you can see here, incomplete metamorphosis of both apply is also called homotaboly. The first one is egg. Then it will turn to lag, it will turn to pupa, then adult stage of butterfly. While well, we talk about incomplete metamorphosis, the first one is egg, 
Then there's three states of nine, small, bigger, and biggest one. Then the adult stage, that is grasshopper. Then we'll talk about the next class, that, then the examples of some insects. We'll talk about examples of some insects. These are ants, bee, mantis, houseflight, grasshopper, butterfly, mosquito, termite, and pit, um, seaside, mouth, and dragonfly, whitefly, etc., cockroach, etc., caterpillar. These are the, some examples of some insects that you may encounter while reading classification of living organisms. So, the next class we will talk about under is Mariafoda. These are many putets, vary in number from 10 to 750. They are land animals. They are land animals that are found under logs, rocks, and in the soils. Body consists of head and a long trunk. Simple ears often presence. True compound ears sometimes is absent. Sex separated and especially by trachy. Example of Maria Ports are centipede and millipede. We will talk about these two main classes of Maria Ford right now in a summary. Centipede, these are also called Cilipoda, commonly known as centipedes. Cilipoda, let me say class Cilipoda is also called centipede. Body is tall, serpentinely plaid, and trunk segment numerous to 15 to 177. Each trunk, except the last two, bear the feel on the legs. Each trunk, have a, uh, except the last two, has a legs. First trunk bear a maxillifid. A maxillifid is a poison claw which used to kill it is a prey. That is, they use maxillifid to use to kill it is prey. And genital on the posterior end of the body. They have a genital on the posterior. They are carnivorous. Move by, move very fast. They can move very, very fast. An example is Lesobius and Scotegera. Then we talk about the next class that is Mexilifites. These are also called class Diplopoda, commonly known as Melipites. There is no appendage on the first trunk segment. Gent uh, let me see, genital pore is on the third thoracic segment. They are sluggish, are often coiled when disturbed. Each body segment with two pairs of legs. First four segment represent thorax. So these are the differentiation between centripite and millipite. Centripite is also called cilipoda. Millipite is also called diplopoda. And genital type, a genital is on the third thoracic segment. While under centripite, genital is on the posterior end of the body. So then the next we will talk about a example of centipede and millipede. As you can see here, there is a centipede. It has a, a segment body with a pair of legs. As you can see here, why millipede is typical here? This is just an image of some differentiation between centipede and millipede. We will make a special videos about these classes. These just introductions. Then we will talk about the next class that is class Arachinida. Arachinida, their body is divided into two parts, sepulotras and abdomen. Sepulotras bear a simple ears with two pairs of appendage and they use for feeding. And they have no antenna and have four pairs of walking legs, that is Arachinida. Their first appendage are poisonous, pinchers called Siliricae, Siliri, uh, let me see, Chelicere, especially by Trachia or Long Books. Lack of compound air, but for say some simple ears, that is arachnidas. They are terrestrial, terrestrial. Example include spider, scorpion, mite, tick, and etc. External picture of um, spider. As you can see here, there's a walking legs, there's a chilicere, there's a e, there's a sepulotros, there's a pobi, an abdomen, and etc. So, um, we will talk about the next steps, that is, example of some arachnida. As you can see here, there is a scorpion, there is a mite tick. Um, this is the main, I mentioned three examples of these arachnidas. Then, we will talk about the next phylum, that is phylum um, echinodermata. 
it is not a matter. All are marine organisms, like in seashells or sea beds. These are um, echinomadams. And also, they have four basic characteristics that are not shared by any other phylum in the living things phylums. These are number one. Most echinoderms have a radial symmetry. They possess an endoskeleton of calcious plates, that is calcium carbonate known as ossicles. They possess a nucleosis of calcium carbonate known as ossicles. And also have a water vascular system, consists of a network of water filled canal inside their body. They have a many small to pit height in environment and movement. Let me see pit in the height of movement that health in the movement, feeding, respiration, and excretions. Adults develop from a bilaterally symmetrical body, larva, probably evolved from a bilaterally symmetrical ancestor. These are the main features of um, Echinoderms. They have no head, no sign of civilizations, and they possess a ventral mouth. Their early larva stage shows evidence of metameric segmentations. Adults are on segment. The epibides, the epidibis itself consists of cells responsible for support and maintenance of the skeletons. Examples of these um, echinoderms are class Asteroidea, that is star-like or starfish, we can call it starfish. Then there is class Opiridoea, that is how I supposed to pronounce it, sorry for my pronunciations, that is snake-like or snake-like, okay, snake tail, no, it's not snake tail, it's snake-like, snake-like fish, oh, let me say snake fish, there is a class Echinodia, these are spin-like fish, so, example of some Echinoderms are, as you can see here, there's a star fish, there's a snake fish, and also there's a spin fish, look at this, these are Echinoderms, then, we will talk about five chodata. Five chodata are butter bread. So we have finished in butter bread. Now we will talk about butter bread. These are number one five chodata. These are da. Let me see chodata are butter bread animals that have a notter coat and backbone or vertebral column made of series of small balls called vertebra. The series of small balls of a butter bread is called butter bread. Some are product. Protocoded, um, which means they have both features of invertebrate and vertebrate animals. Flexible rod of tightly packaged cells. Tubular half curve, that is dosa and gill slit at some stage of their lives. Life cycle. Bilateral symmetrical body and consists of heads, trunk, and tail. Internal skeletal systems or endoskeletal systems. Well developed central nervous systems and well developed sense organs, well developed circulatory system, excretory system, and transport systems are tetrapods, which means have a two pairs of lips that is tetrapods. Neck skin, or sometimes skin is covered with a scales hair or pizza. Separated males and females with sexual reproduction in most cases, which pews cases of. Some of them, then they have sex separated. Um, classifications of vertebrate. Vertebrate have been classified. The first one is peaches, amphibians, reptilia, aves, and mammalian. We will talk about this one step by step. Um, class species. Is it species? That's how I suppose pronounce Sometimes I have a wrong misspelling. Sorry, my pronunciations. They are species which are all aquatic. Some are jawless fish. Example are hagfish and lamprey, which are the most primitive fishes. They are the most primitive fishes. Have a soccer like mouth, oh, and no fear pins. They have no fear pins. Some have a jaws. Let me see, they are jaw fish. Example, cartilaginous fish like jack, skate, race, with pear pins. Skeletus are made. <coughs> Skeletus are made of cartilage like jawless fish. Their skeleton is made of cartilage like jawless fish. Fish like talipia are the most susceptible groups of fishes.
the most successful group of fishes are Joni fish, like talipir and carp. Overview and caresses of some of bony fish. We'll talk about caresses of bony fish. They are called blooded animals, um, which body temperature vary with that of its surrounding. Body is covered with scales. Absent jawless fish and liar of slims. Cartilaginous species has a sharp tooth like scales and don't overlove. They do not overlove. Bony fish has a thin, plaid and rounded scale that they overlove. Ears of pin and adaptation of the full and hind leaf. The of the full and hind leaves. Gaseous exchanged by a gills. Bony fish gills is called. Okay, you have to understand it. Why cartilaginous fish is not cover but has a slight well developed sense of organs of smells and line system which enable to dictate movement at a pressure. It's inner ear and has a two chamber head. Fertilization is inter is sally internal. Fertilization is external. I think I wrote a mistake. So all it has an inner ear. And has a two chambered heart. Fertilization external. External pictures of bony fish. As here, there is a spinal cord that is gallbladder, spin dorsal pin, soft dorsal pin, caudal pin, lateral line, anal pin, bladder anus, intestine, reproductive organs, and pancreas. There is a stomach. The and there is a heart, there is an osteoporosis, osteoporosis, and there is a pelvic pain. Also, there is a gills for respiration, and there is a brain and kidney. kidney. So, these are not pictures of um, bony fish. We will talk about them in the next video. Just a summary, we will talk about them specifically in the main function of each. Then, we will talk about the next class that is amphibia. Class amphibia. The, this believes to have an ancient of love in fishes. Force vertebrates to venture out of water and live on line. That is amphibians. For example are frogs. Let me see. Frog especially. They undergo through meses. Their eggs have a okay. Their eggs have no egg shells. So the sperm can swim through water to the eggs. Embryo must develop in water. That is amphibians. Dual are separated. The last circular are separated. Sex is external part. Respiration by gills, lungs, or skin. Moist skins. The art and has a pair of pure and hind lips in the adult stage. It has sticky tongue which can be bit and retracted quickly. It has an inner and middle. It has three chamber heart. Example: frog, dot, newt, and salamanders. Frogs are the largest group of amphibians. We will talk about overview and pictures of untaught. They have stored body with powerful hind legs for leaf and weak feet for swimming. Mate in water. During mate, male, they will clips on female back after its lay eggs. Male release his, his pumps over them, over the eggs of male. And which the embryo of fertilized eggs develop in like lava coal. That is adult. Uh, that is the uh, primary stage and thoughts. The thoughts for feed on aquatic plants and animal. The frogs thoughts feed on insects and worm. Salamanders and newts have a slender, elongated with neck and long tail. So external pitch frogs, as you can see, typical structure of frogs. There is a head. There is a snow. There is a, there is a mouth. There is a um, dictating. dictating Tit nick, let me see, nick titating membrane, there's a e, there is tamperano, there is feelings, fingers, a valley, touch and web, hind leaf, went and mid dorsal line and trunks. And as you can see here, when we talk about external parting trunks, look at how male will cleave into female to his spams. Um then the next class we will talk about is class reptilia or reptiles. Mm. These are snakes, total crocodile, lizard, etc. They were the first group of vertebrates to live to have become completely adaptive to life online. First to life online completely. 
they have a scales which are dry to touch their sex is a separated which is internal fertilization their eggs have a lazy shells and there's no larva stage and use lung for respirations reptile are exothermic or let me say cold blooded animals have an amniotic egg which allow predom from war shell eggs and amniotic reptile also have four extra embryonic membranes the first one amnion that supports aquatic environment inside the egg plute sac amnion in, is the outermost membranes of fetal membranes of reptiles bees and mammal the sac which embryo is suspended and also there is alantios that allow gas exchange and eliminated waste and there is chorion that is which also allowed gas exchange and also there is a yolk sacs only one of the four left over from malfigian amphibian ancestor this derived from the malfigian ancestor they are cold blooded and has a well developed tongue which can be throated and retract quickly it just have a teeth of the same kind embedded in a socket it has a inner and middle ears it has incomplete developed four chamber heart they have four chamber heart but it is incomplete so let's talk about our view and structure example of some reptile as you can see here there's a lizard and also there's a crocodile and also there's a snake then as you can see here these are the typical example of some reptile so the next we'll talk about class aves aves this include all types of beads both plightless and plain beads they have pizza and beads bonds are light which for which for plight, which is also for plight, and they are only butter bread with flexible neck. Presence of, of, of hollow bones with air space that may be connected to air sacs and cross link structure within the bones to provide structural reinforcements. Beasts are endothermic, which means endo, inner. They are controlled their body from within, which means they are warm blooded. Half of internal patellations, mating is a, a, a accompanied by and an elaborate courtship ritual and eggs are often young beads are more exact than their egg they are, let me see the eggs at young are more exact in exothermic are not able to control their body from within that is from inter so they must be brooded or incubated by a friend and have a head have a head neck and trunk and cover with a pizza while hind lips with a skin it has four chamber hearts um good ear sight and a good ear for sighting and all are for only inner and middle ears it's just are drowned out from the toothless beak for feeding biologists biologists believe that biologists believe that beads have involved from reptel as you can see here this is a typical structure of some external feature of figure there's a head there's a e there's a ear, nostalgic beak and also there's a neck Position of external ear opening. There is a control visa, um, wing uh, wing combat, and there is also black bass. There is also wing pizza. Also there is a tail pizzas. There is a leg. There is a hind toe or helix helix, and also there is scales on the legs. They have a scales on their legs, and there is also claw or anterior tongues. They have hind toes and anterior toes. These are the external feature of figure. And the next class we will talk about is um, class mammalian. All we belong to this group. They are the most advanced animal with our warm blooded animals. Skin has a sweat and suspicious glands and covering hairs. Um, different types of teeth. We have a different types of teeth which is having a specific functions. Which each teeth carrying a specific functions. They have external ear called pinea. Its body separate too by a muscular sheet called diaphragm. Lung is located in the upper thoracic cavity. Alimentary canal and reproductive organs are located in the abdominal cavity. All mammals. They have well developed heart and fertilization is internal. Um, let me see, the mammal are divided into four things, or this include, but we are going to talk about these three. They are the first one, the egg line mammals, or monotherium, the porch mammals, or mosquito, and also the plant center mammals. So most animals belong to plant center. The egg line uh, let me say the egg lying platus, the spiny anti uh, antita are the most primitive mammals. You can get it, they are the most primitive mammals. Most of like kangaroos and cola are also one of the most primitive mammals. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, remember the time is running down, which means we are getting out of time. So, we will discuss the main orders of some plant center, that is group of mammals. And please, if you are new here, kindly subscribe to this channel and also turn on the notification bell, so that by the time you listen to the video, you will be the first one to get notice. And then, listen carefully, sometimes in, in this video, you may hear a wrong spelling of some words. Let me see, a wrong pronunciation of some words. So, of course, you have to remember, the English is not the main language. So, I highly recommend you, you can go on Google to search on how to pronounce them correctly. So, without further ado, let's go to the main orders of some plant center. That is classifications of some mammals. The first one we have, rodents. That is order number one, rodent. These are small mammals with scissor-like front teeth for gnawing at the plant food. The rat example of them are rats. Mice, squirrel, and porcupines. Order number two are Carophenterans. Caro, carof, carofterans, carofterans. These are small plant mammals which are to know, which means they feed on fruit or insects. The example of them are fruits, bats, and insectivorous bat. Then there is a carnivorous, that is class number three, order number three. These are meat eaters, good hunters with skin sides of light, smells, and hearing. They have a shafted cloth, shafted and cloth and struck jaw for catching their prey and eating them. Examples of these carnivores are dogs, wolves, fox, bears, and also there's a lion, cheetahs, tigers, hyenas, and etc. And also the next orders are ungulates. Ung uh, let me see, ungulates. These are plant eaters which who pit out and tot, open tot. They have a teeth which plant rich surface for grinding food. Examples of these are zebra, horse, pig, and jarified goat and cattle, etc. These are ungulates. Is it ungulates? Um, the next class we're going to talk about is cetaceans. Cetaceans. These are aquatic mammals with stream body, no hind limbs, foods are modified as a plippers. These are wireless and dolphins. The next orders, that is the last orders we're going to talk about right now in this video are pyramids. Pyramids, let me see, we belong to this um, order. They are grasping, they have a grass skin, fingers and toes. Ears are, po are positioned at the front of the head and their ears are positioned in the tongue, in the front of it. Example of these are lemurs, monkeys, apes and human beings. So, all we come at the end of this video. If I mention anything, please kindly write it down in the comment section so that I will clearly see it and will make a special video for that. So, don't forget, I said sometimes you may hear a wrong pronunciation, but remember, English is not the main language. You can find more on how to pronounce this mistake I made. So, do have a nice day. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Bye.